Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and the big news this week is the MCU has taken a big hit with the Marvels crashing and burning worldwide. We do have other news to talk about of course in Hollywood. Uh, we have streaming updates and new trailers. But first, let's talk about the domestic top five. So good news for the Marvels is that it did debut in first place. The bad news is that it only made $46.1 million. Yikes, we will talk about that in a minute. Uh, the first, second place was Five Nights at Freddy's with $8.9 million for a total of $127.2 million. In third place was the Eras Tour with $6 million for a total now of $172.7 million. Fourth place was Priscilla with $4.6 million for a total of $12.5 million. And in fifth place was Killers of the Flower Moon with $4.5 million for a total of $59.8 million. So what happened? Well, first off, it's only getting okay reviews, with it at 61% on Rotten Tomatoes. But from the audience's perspective, they don't care or they don't like it. This is the lowest opening ever for an MCU movie. And for the people that did go and see it opening night, well, they didn't like it, with the movie earning a B cinema score. So word of mouth is not doing too good either. So why didn't the audiences care enough to show up? I think that's due to numerous reasons. First, there was never really any hype for this movie, even before the strikes. Uh, also, with how mixed the MCU quality has been the past two years, I think people are basically of the mood is that if an MCU show or movie gets great reviews, then they will go watch it. Otherwise, they are out. They're done. And to be fair, after Secret Invasion, who can blame them? And this isn't an issue with, oh, the movie is too long, so there's limited show times. The film is just over an hour and a half. It's pretty short. And I think it's clear now, if it hasn't been for a while, that Captain Marvel made over a billion back in 2019, thanks in part to Infinity War and Endgame, right? Being released between both movies, especially a, what, a month, month and a half before Endgame. Now look, people were looking for anything to watch related to the MCU. So when you release a movie about a brand new character that could help the Avengers, of course they're going to go watch. Well, look, you take that away, I still think it does well at the box office just not a billion dollars i think it, like back in 2019 if avengers wasn't about to come out captain marvel would probably do six seven hundred million dollars not bad pretty good pretty good numbers it's just the hype around the avengers is what boosted it to a billion not oh my god captain marvel it's no this is the new character to help the avengers overall though i feel bad for the cast and director here as while it seems that the, the movie they made wasn't great i haven't seen it myself yet uh, they really are paying for the sins of other bad MCU projects like Secret Invasion and Thor Love and Thunder. Also, for Brie Larson, they really, at this point, just kind of wasted her as Captain Marvel. Like, she started to develop as a character toward the end of her movie. She has no development in Endgame. Uh, she, you know, she just attacks Thanos' army and that's it. And then we have the Marvels. So, look, if she wanted out after this, I wouldn't blame her. In China, the Marvels, like in most of the world... Did not have a good start. Staying in first place is Last Suspect with 11.5 million for a total of 50.4 million dollars. Opening in second place was The Marvels with 11.4 million. In third place was Be My Family, which opened to 6.8 million. Fourth place was The Abandoned, which opened to 1.8 million. And in fifth place was Only The River Flows with 1.1 million for a total of 38.8 million dollars. Also for Hollywood films, Napoleon did get approved for release in the country, with it set to come out December 1st. Internationally, the Marvels also had a bad time, earning $63.3 million for a worldwide opening weekend of $109.4 million. And yes, this is the lowest opening worldwide for an MCU movie. Five Nights at Freddy's earned another $15.4 million for a worldwide total of $252 million. Killers of the Flower Moon made $6 million dollars for a worldwide total of 137.1 million, and the Eras Tour made 2.5 million for a worldwide total of 240.9 million dollars. Let's start off the news in Hollywood with release date changes. Universal is making their move to claim the start of the summer movie season by pushing back The Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Previously set to come out March 1st, it will now instead come out May 3rd. 
I think it's a good spot for the film, and look, something needed to take that spot after Deadpool 3 was pushed back. You need a movie to kick off the summer, and look, as long as it gets solid reviews, it should do decent numbers at the box office. And with March 1st now open, Warner Brothers has moved Dune Part 2 up a few weeks, and will now come out then. And look, hey look, <laughs> Dune coming out sooner than expected, I'll take it. Disney has announced that 20th Century Studios will release the first Omen on April 5th. The film is a prequel to the original movie in the horror franchise that came out back in 1976. An exclusive from Deadline, they are reporting that Viva Pictures has bought the North American distribution rights to Deep Sea. It is a 3D animated Chinese film. It was originally released in China earlier in the year for Chinese New Year. As for the domestic release, it will be shown in select theaters starting November 24th. Four movies coming out real soon. Reviews have not been great. First, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes have gotten okay reviews, with it at 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, while that's not bad, co for context, it is the lowest rated movie in the franchise. Still, as long as fans love it and it gets good word of mouth, it'll be fine. As for Disney, on the other hand, well, they might have an issue with Wish. This is their animated film that is supposed to be a tribute to Disney's 100 years, and reviews are bad, with it right now getting a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. Even look at Metacritic isn't great, with it at a 47. Now, like The Hunger Games, if Wish connects with audiences, then there's a chance they can still do well at the box office. But based on these reviews, it's looking like that's not going to happen. And then for Apple, the reviews have started to come out for Napoleon, and it's looking pretty mixed as well, hovering around 60-61%, uh, sometimes dropping to 59 as reviews are added. So this is definitely not looking to be an awards contender like Killers of the Flower Moon is. The Oscars have found their host, and it turns out they have looked to Jimmy Kimmel to host for a fourth time. Kimmel's a fine choice. Like, he's, he's, he's good, but it's just nothing exciting since it's the fourth time he'll have done it. Uh, but again, not a bad choice by any means. And the Golden Globes will be available to watch, with them reaching a deal with CBS to air the award show. The upcoming Golden Globes will be on January 7th, and will be available to watch on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. Sadly, we had multiple deaths this week. Uh, Kevin Turn died at 44, and as of now, the cause of death is not known. He was a producer on multiple projects, including Euphoria, Waves, X, and Pearl. Josh Acklin died at age 95. He was an actor who appeared in numerous films, including Lethal Weapon 2, The Hunt for Red October, and Bill and Ted, among others. Roger Carl Castle died at the age of 92. While not an actor, he was an illustrator who worked on movie posters with the most famous ones he worked on being the posters for Jaws and The Empire Strikes Back. And finally, Suzanne Shepard died at the age of 89. She appeared in The Sopranos, Rank Ruim, Fort Dream, and Goodfellas. Thoughts and prayers are with their families, and may they rest in peace. In an update on the strikes, SAG President Fran Drescher defended the deal against the complaints in a meeting over Zoom. Quote, if you read things like that, it's very inflammatory and unfortunate because it's using social media and chat rooms to advance someone's personal agenda. End quote. So yeah, some more people have come out against the deal as more details have been released and they are specifically not happy about the AI safeguards with the thinking they should have pushed for more. Personally, I still think this will pass even if it is not all smooth sailing like the WGA ratifying their deal. David Zasloff also had some thoughts on the WGA in a new New York Times article about him. Talking to them, he says he has no problem overpaying them to get the deal done, as he considers them great talent. Quote, they are right about almost everything, so what if we overpay? I've never regretted overpaying for great talent or great asset. End quote. Speaking of Zasloff, Warner Brothers Discovery seems to have done a 180 on the Coyote vs. Acme movie. While they still do not want to distribute it to themselves, they are now open to selling it. Puck News first broke the story that they are allowing the filmmakers to shop it around Hollywood and see if any offers would be made. Then Deadline exclusively reported that screenings of the film are being set up for potential buyers. As of now, those buyers include Netflix, Amazon, and Apple. Also, Congressman Joaquin Castro isn't too happy that this was almost another film to be locked away forever and is calling for an investigation. Posting on X, he said, quote, The Warner Brothers' discovery tactic of scrapping fully made films for tax breaks is predatory and anti-competitive. As the Justice Department and FTC revised their antitrust guidelines, they should review this conduct. As someone remarked, it's like burning down a building for the insurance money. End quote. 
So why the turnaround? Well, it's being reported that after the news broke that they were considering not releasing it, uh, the studio got a wave of not-so-happy people calling them from around Hollywood. Now, to be clear, this does not mean the movie is definitely coming out, as it still needs to be sold first. But look at its core. This is another bad PR move that could have easily been avoided. I still find it weird that they don't want to just release it themselves, though. Like, Looney Tunes is synonymous with Warner Brothers. The movie is finished, and it's just, eh, we don't want to. I find that very odd. The Hollywood Reporter is exclusively reporting that Anna Noguerera has been hired to write the script for Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And Deadline is exclusively reporting that Maria Gabriela de Farah has signed on to play the role of the engineer for Superman Legacy. Sticking with superheroes, there are some updates over at Marvel Studios. It's being reported that Pedro Pascal is in talks for the role of Reed Richards for the upcoming Fantastic Four film. However, it is not close to being a done deal, with reports being that while talks are going in the right direction, they're still ongoing. I mean, look, I don't care much for the Fantastic Four personally. But I do really like Pedro Pascal, so if it does happen, it would make me more interested in the movie. And in an exclusive from Deadline, they are reporting that Destin Daniel Cretton is leaving the director's chair for Avengers The Kang Dynasty. This is reportedly amicable between Cretton and Marvel Studios because of two things. One, Marvel Studios is still working on what to do with the Kang Dynasty, with the whole Jonathan Major situation, and with the film's release being pushed back to 2026. And the second is... Cretton is still at Marvel Studios, just working on other projects. Right now, he is working on a new Marvel show for Disney Plus called Wonder Man, and while not confirmed, likely getting ready soon to start working on a Shang-Chi sequel. If that happens, his schedule is pretty busy for the next two years anyway. There would be no time for him to direct an Avengers movie on top of that. Curious if they are going to try and get the same director for both Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Also, in an odd way to uh, announce a movie, Disney... CEO Bob Iger uh, seemingly confirmed that Frozen 4 is in development. In an interview with Good Morning America, he said this, quote, Frozen 3 is in the works, and there might be a Frozen 4 in the works too, but I don't have much to say about those films right now. But Jen Lee, who created Frozen, the original Frozen and Frozen 2, is hard at work with her team at Disney Animation on not one, but actually two stories, end quote. Now, to be fair, he didn't say this out of the blue for no reason. Uh, while the interview was with Good Morning America, he wasn't in the studio. Instead, he was at Disneyland in Hong Kong to celebrate the new expansion to the park world of Frozen. So, you know, it's siping up Frozen as a brand, right? The IP, World of Frozen, and basically telling people, hey, you know, you have Frozen 3 to look forward to, maybe a Frozen 4. So, it's just kind of weird to just drop that out of blue, but context-wise, I understand and look, if a Frozen 4 does happen, I would not be surprised in the slightest. It's just kind of odd. Again, we uh, we don't even have a release date for, for, for Frozen 3 or a poster, and that's just being dropped. Oh yeah, Frozen 4 is being worked on as well. Like, okay. Uh, I guess that film will come out in like 7-8 years. In continuing the trend of announcing a movie randomly, Deadline has the exclusive on this, but at an event hosted by Deadline, Creed 3 producer Iron Wrinkler mentioned that Creed 4 is in development and that Michael B. Jordan is set to direct. Again, like Frozen 4, a Creed 4 happening is not surprising. Creed 3 was received well and did really good at the box office. I don't think Amazon is going to be like, eh, we don't want to do another one. Also in development at Amazon MGM Studios is a live-action master of the universe film, aka He-Man, Skeletor, etc. Now, this is technically not a new movie, as this was first in development at Netflix before they canceled it over the summer. Now it seems like it has moved over to Amazon, where they will continue to develop it. Deadline has the exclusive on the next two stories. First off, Angel Studios have bought the worldwide rights to Bonnefer, a thriller written and directed by Todd Kramanaki. It is set for a theatrical release sometime in 2024. And the second is a new movie in development at Studio Canal and the picture company called Leap. It is a thriller set on the Eurostar train between London and Paris, where a passenger needs to be saved as they are caught in a time loop. It will be directed by Mohamed Diab and written by Ben Ripley, who, funny enough, also wrote the source code. You know, the movie set on a train and a character is stuck in a time loop. Uh, still, look, that was a solid movie. Uh, so if this is anything close to it, it should be a good watch.
We got a slew of trailers from Sony and Columbia Pictures. First, they released a new trailer for their upcoming rom-com film, Anyone But You. It is set to come out December 22nd. Next, we got a trailer for a film coming out next year, uh, Madam Web, which looks fine. I just, I don't see the point of the movie existing. And considering how comic book movies have done this year, the movie needs to give the audience a reason to show up. That's what it feels like. And I don't see the point of the movie. Hey, if the audience shows up, who knows, maybe. Maybe it'll actually be a good movie. That might help, but I don't know. It comes out February 14th, 2024. And then the last trailer was for the Garfield movie. This is the animated adaptation of The Orange Cat, starring Chris Pratt and Samuel L. Jackson. It comes out to May 24th, 2024. Lionsgate also released a trailer giving us a first look at Arthur the King. This is a movie about a bond made between a racer and a dog, and it stars Mark Wahlberg. It is set to come out March 22nd, 2024. Let's start off VOD Premium with Peacock, where they announced that The Exorcist Believer will be available to watch starting December 1st. Over at Hulu, Welcome to Wrexham has been renewed for a third season. The show following the football team owned by Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney just recently finished up its second season. Just Getting Started on Hulu is a new miniseries called A Murder at the End of the World, starring Emma Korn and Clive Owen. The show comes from FX and so far has gotten great reviews with it at 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Disney Plus released a trailer for the upcoming Percy Jackson and the Olympians show, with it set to premiere on December 20th. On the Marvel side, What If Season 2 will premiere on December 22nd, with a new episode daily. The season will be nine episodes long. This is a different way of releasing a show that than what Disney has usually done, but I take, take it since What If is not a big premium MCU show, they can afford to play around in how to release it. If they market it well, who knows, maybe it'll get more interest in the fact that it's a daily release. Over at AMC, they announced that The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, will premiere on February 25th on both AMC and, of course, AMC+. Plus. This is the highly anticipated Rick and Michonne show. AMC is also getting another limited series, Blackberry. Uh, and yes, that's right, this is the movie that came out earlier in the year. It, too, is getting the treatment of being turned into a miniseries of three episodes. The miniseries version of it already aired in Canada on CBC and is now available to stream on AMC+. You can also watch the movie version of it there as well. You have the choice of both. In exclusive from Deadline, they are reporting that Suzume will be available to stream on Crunchyroll starting November 16th. I mean, for myself, I enjoyed the film. Uh, not as good as Your Name, but definitely worth a watch. For Max, they have renewed Harley Quinn for a fifth season. I think at this point, with all the changes that have happened at Warner Brothers Discovery, Harley Quinn is now the longest-running Max show. Over Paramount, production will begin on the last episodes of Yellowstone in the spring. Makes sense, as they are planning to air them in November. And for Paramount+, Plus, SEAL Team will end after its upcoming seventh season. The now final season is set to premiere sometime in 2024 on a streaming service. For Apple TV+, Plus, it looks like they might have another hit show on their hands. The reviews for Monarch Legacy of Monsters have come out, and it's being well-received, with it at 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and certified fresh. The first two episodes are available to watch now, with weekly releases until January. At Prime Video, they released a trailer for the upcoming film called Roleplay, a comedic spy thriller starring Kaylee Kugo and David O. Yellow. The film is directed by Thomas Vincent and premieres on January 12th. 2024. They also released a few images of their upcoming show Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is set to premiere on February 2nd. Finally, they are moving forward with one of their Bosch spin-offs. This one is the one focused on LA detective Renee Ballard, who works on cold cases. While it has been in development since earlier this year, it has gotten the green light and a 10-episode season will go into production. The official description for the show also hints that Bosch himself will make an appearance in the show to help out. Take a quick look at international news. BBC Studios have made an agreement with Japanese streaming service Limino. Starring November 15th, Limino subscribers will get access to BBC shows, including Sherlock, Life Below Zero, Death in Paradise, and more. We have the Nielsen Top 10 charts for the week of October 16th to the 22nd. And in first place overall is The Fall of the House of Usher with 1.46 billion minutes. Suits came in second place with 1 billion minutes watched. In Streaming Originals Top 10, Loki came in 5th place with 525 million minutes. And for the Top 10 chart for movies, Old Dads came in 1st with 728 million 
minutes watched. For the Netflix Top 10 chart for the week of November 6th to the 12th, The Killer debuted in first place on the English film chart with 27.9 million views. On the English TV Top 10 chart, All the Light We Cannot See stayed in first place with 10 million views. In exclusive from Deadline, Netflix has a new film in development that can now move forward thanks to the actor's strike ending. The film is about a Carthaginian general named Hannibal who led his forces against the Roman Republic back around 210 BC. It'll be directed by Anton Fuqua and star Denzel Washington in the lead role as the general. They recently just worked together making The Equalizer 3. The movie sounds interesting enough and I'll probably give it a watch. Deadline is also reporting that Wednesday season 2 is set to begin filming in Ireland starting in April. This would be a change as the first season was filmed in Romania. As for something to watch on Netflix sooner, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is now available to watch. This is the animated adaptation of Scott Pilgrim featuring the cast of the live-action adaptation. And that is it for this episode of Box Office Receipts. If you want to follow me on X, Threads, Instagram, or Facebook, links to those are in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.